السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد My dear viewers welcome to another live edition of our program Ask Koda And here is our contact information for those of you who would like to give us a call today Phone numbers area code 002-0105469323 Alternatively area code 002-0238551322 also, we're going live on my page, M. Salah Official, at the Facebook page. And, mashallah, I've received many of your valuable questions. I'll be happy to begin by tackling some of them. Ahmed Mustafa just asked, and his question was the first in order, should one delay marriage if they cannot find a righteous spouse, or should they compromise and settle for someone who might not be very practicing? As you know, my dear brother Ahmed, that marriage sometimes is permissible, and this is the general condition. Sometimes it is recommended, sometimes it's a must, and sometimes it is disliked, and sometimes it could be even forbidden. So, in brief, it, unger it undergoes the five hukm of the Sharia. Ah. It varies from wajib all the way to prohibition, based on the condition of the individual. If somebody who does not have a pressing need to get married and he's still looking for a righteous spouse, whether it's he or she, that's permissible to delay the marriage until they find the righteous person. As the Prophet ﷺ advised both to look for a righteous spouse. He said, the Prophet ﷺ, to men who are looking forward to get married, فَالْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاكِ You should look for a woman who has religious commitment in order to be successful, in order to have a good mother for your kids, in order to have a spouse who would assist you to be obedient to Allah the Almighty and both of you will be on the same page. And he ordered women the same thing, not to accept any proposal. But there is a difference between looking for a righteous person and there are many, definitely, and looking for Mr. Right or miss right. Some people their anticipations and expectations are beyond imagination and they keep waiting, waiting, waiting until finally they settle for anyone. So neither extreme is recommended. The person must be moderate. I mean if I see a woman who's mashallah and I see I like her, she's beautiful, she belongs to a good family, and she prays the five daily prayers. She's wearing hijab. To me, this is righteous. She knows how to, to recite Quran. She abstains from what is haram. This is righteousness. But if you're looking for somebody who's a hafidha, has an ijaza, and uh, she prays every night at night, and she fasts on every other day, perhaps you're gonna be waiting for a wife. May Allah make it easy for you to find the right spouse, and may Allah make it easy for you to get married very soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Fahim from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum. Hello? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, this is Fahim from Nigeria. Yes, Fahim, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh, uh, two episodes back, I asked uh, due to there was uh, there was no time, you couldn't answer. So I want to ask the same question again. I want to ask about uh, this uh, dua kunut for with a prayer. Mm -hmm. Is it any specific dua or, uh, Sheikh, you can say anything you feel like. And uh, can you say it in your language? Uh, let's say I don't have, I don't know Arabic that much. No. So can I say it in my language as well? Okay, Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you. The qunut in witr is recommended and it does not invalidate the witr if the person did not do it. So Al-Hasan ibn Ali, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, 
have narrated that the Prophet وسلم, mentioned this supplication to be recited in Qunut. If you memorize it, fine. If you don't, you can just say any dua. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa'afina fi man afayt, wa tawlana fi man tawallayt. Oh Allah, guide us among those whom you have guided. Take care of us among those whom you have taken care of. Pardon us among those whom you have pardoned them, etc. If the person added to that, forgive us our sins, اغفر لنا ذنوبنا, كفر عنا سيأتنا, or even if you say, ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار, that would be sufficient. A person who knows how to pray and knows the least dua can use it in their sujood, can use it in their qunut. Simply say, ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. But if a person doesn't know Arabic whatsoever, like a beginner, reverts new Muslims, they can recite the dua in their mother tongue. May Allah accept from all of us for him. Next, please. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ahmed from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ahmed. Sorry, please try again. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Saad. Brother Saad Hid is saying, where can I find the correct details of how to read namaz according to the sunnah? Well, I can definitely advise you to watch a program that Allah has blessed us and we filmed 10 years ago or so. It's called the Prophet's Prayer. You can find it uh, on the YouTube and various media platforms called the Prophet's Prayer by Huda TV. <clears throat> the program will show you how to pray from beginning to end, inshallah, according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and away from the differences of opinion. Barakallah feek. Um, let me uh, not mention the name, or at least the first name, but Samu is asking, uh, what to do to stop hating a parent who certainly have ruined your life and have not and how not to expose the bitterness the bitterness of heart while talking to them because want to according to the Quran and so it seems like you know the person is really having a very terrible experience with her parent we'll talk about that inshallah in a little bit assalamu alaikum sister alia assalamu alaikum welcome to ask huda Alaikum salam. How are you, Dr. Salam? Doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Go ahead, please. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, because I'm really worried. Uh, like three weeks ago, I, I took one kitten on the road. And then I took it home and I, we, we feed him. We give him name, Max. We love him. But uh, like one week ago, you know, he, we're happy because he started to play. He's jumping on the canaba. Mm. But we always have scratches. And my youngest daughter always have scratches also because of the way he's playing and he's hurting us. Mm. And sometimes biting our clothes, playing, but it hurts. And I got, her, uh, I, I got worried from my kids. And today, this morning, I decided to put it back outside mm. with other two kittens, other two kittens from outside. I want to know if what I did is haram or <laughs> please give me advice, Dr. Muhammad. Okay. Thank you, Sister Alia. Sister Alia decided to pick up a pet from the street. It was not even uh, like, uh, you know, a pet, a kitten. And uh, but after taking care of the kitten, they started scratching the kids and her and so on. So they are posing a danger to them. And of course, it is dangerous. So she decided to put it back uh, in the seat. Is it permissible? It is definitely permissible. Let me remind you of the hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu said that a woman have uh, entered hellfire or deserved to enter hellfire because of a kitten. She imprisoned the kitten. She neither fed it nor let it go to eat from the street. So this is what is forbidden, to torture an animal, to deprive it, to starve it until it dies. But the animals can find their way to earn their provision and eat from the street. Don't worry about them. Allah provides for them. But only if you decide to take them home, then you have to take care of them. So what you did was perfectly okay. Thank you, Sister uh, Alia. 
The sister whom I presented her question earlier about the terrible experience with the parent, with her mom or whoever, maybe the dad or the mother, and now, you know, they feel hatred. So she's asking how to stop hating him or her. You know, no matter how bad is your experience, you gotta understand that your presence in this life was simply because of your parents. And they do have biological rights, and they have rights upon you that Allah the Almighty mandated. Similarly, your children will have, uh, you know, you will have rights upon your children. Even if the parents or the parent was a non-believer. Imagine when Allah the Almighty, after commanding, being kind, dutiful, and in the service of the parents, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنَا an ihsana, we enjoin upon the insan, mankind, to be kind to his or her parents. Then Allah the Almighty says, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطَعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا Sometimes, and I get the salat, some youth accept Islam, but their parents not only oppose them, they make their life miserable. And they put a lot of pressure on them in order to convert them back to kufr. In this case, what to do with them? Allah the Almighty said two things in this regard. With regards to their struggle to convert you to this belief, لا تطعهما. Do not obey them in this regard. Yet وصاحبهما في الدنيا معروفة. Being having non-Muslim parents doesn't mean that the rights are confiscated or waived. No. Even if they were non-Muslims. Not only that, even if they were putting pressure on you to convert you to this belief, they still have rights upon you. The rights of the good companionship, taking care of them, providing for them if you have the means and they don't have, treating them kindly, not throwing them in nursing homes, visiting them on a regular basis, giving them the proper treatment of the medication, of the provision, of the uh, kind treatment, all of that, even if they were non-Muslims. So if you, while you were a child, had a bad experience with any of the parents, it doesn't mean that their rights are waived and you should deprive them from the khidmah or from what Allah Almighty has commanded. And keep in mind that whatever you do, we do for the sake of Allah and anticipating His pardon, His forgiveness, and His reward. Now we're approaching Ramadan. I just want to remind you how many times the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, says, whoever does so and so or such and such thing, out of faith and anticipating the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, whatever we do, we hope that Allah the Almighty will accept it and we hope Allah the Almighty will forgive us our sins and pardon us so that we will be eligible for His mercy on the Day of Judgment. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with him. His mother Safiya, she was the Prophet's aunt by the way, when Sa'ad accepted Islam, uh, she vowed that she would not eat, she would not drink, she would not take a shower, she would starve to death and then um, when she dies, they will blame it all on Sa'ad, on her son. So what am I supposed to do in order to stop this? This shame and have mercy on my mother. She says one thing, just go back to your senses, abandon this religion, don't be Muslim. So Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas visited his mother and said, you know, everybody knows how much I love you. And I do not love anyone in this world more than I do love you. But by Allah, if you happen to have 70 souls and they come out of your body one after another in order to put pressure on me to give up on this faith, to convert back to this belief, I'm not going to do that. So whether you eat or you don't, I'm not going to change my faith. That is the only thing which there is no compromise in its regard. But besides that, you know, by the end, they are your parents, they are the cause of your presence. Your dua for them, your prayer for them is a means for mercy, of mercy for them and for you. May Allah bless you and make you understand that 
the presence of one of your parents or both of them alive and being in their service is simply a cause of entering paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a person who witnesses one of his parents or both of them at an old age and he doesn't gain salvation and entering paradise through serving them, may he be disgraced and humiliated. That was the dua of Jibreel, Angel Gabriel, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was ordered to say, Ameen. May the Almighty Allah make us all beautiful to our parents. Ameen. I have a question from Japan, all the way from Japan. Can I cut my hair because I cannot take care of it? Yes, sister, you can, provided it shouldn't resemble men. As long as your hair still, you know, makes you look like a woman, fine. But cutting the hair to look like a man, that is not permissible because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, May the Almighty Allah curse those of men who act to resemble women and those of women who act to resemble men in course dressing in the hairstyle in behaving you know this is not permissible in our beautiful religion islam but to cut your hair to the shoulders um, you know in order to be able to take care of it all of it all of that is permissible uh, of course uh, albina she has a very interesting question albina said is it okay for a woman to go to a fitness club which only women can go to and only women work there on top of that one observes correct hijab with the loose clothing and in case that they, they play music in the background she puts on the earpiece and she listens to whatever else dars or quran uh, is that permissible uh, if all what you said is true yes it is permissible and it just brings to my attention that maybe 20 years ago when I was once introduced to a fitness club in the States. It's a you know big chain, don't have to mention names. And then for the first time I was given an orientation and then the lady who was escorting me, showing me you know the uh, exercise machines and she came to one point and she said, this is the locker, I cannot go inside. And I was all entirely new to that. Once she opened the door, I saw people were all in the nude, completely in the nude, like the day they were born. I, you know what happened? I just ran off and I never returned to that place again. You know, some cultures do not mind. They think it's if men together, they can take shower and they become completely naked and women together. No, women have aura before other women and men have aura before other men. Not only men and women have aura before each other. So you gotta be very careful, you know. If you can avoid what is haram, then go and exercise. We like to see every Muslim jogging and exercising, lifting weight, and being in good shape, They're doing the aerobic and doing, as long as you're not doing anything which is forbidden, such as uh, exposing your aura, looking at the aura of others, and jumping around with the music and so on. May Allah guide us what is best. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sister Um Saima from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Um Saima. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Salam, Um Saima. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask with a Sister. Uh, Jazakallah khairan kathira for the whole team. Uh, you guys are doing a great job, uh, Sheikh Salam. And may Allah bless you Amen. to do the same thing and guide our generations. Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sana, I have one uh, question. Um, if somebody is doing tawaf uh, within the haram, um, I mean, should it be within the boundary wall of the haram or um, can it be outside like they pray salah sometimes if it is a big, uh, uh, like jama and they pray outside of the masjid al-haram? Uh, can we do the the tawaf too? You mean or outside the masjid? You mean outside the outside masjid the completely? Masjid. Yes. Okay. Is it possible? Okay. And uh, my second question is that, uh, Dr. Salah. 
Please try again, Sister Umm Saima. Can one perform tawaf outside the masjid? The thing is, performing tawaf should be beginning from around the Kaaba. If there is no room, then you expand the circle all the way within the haram. As a matter of fact, there is no way to perform tawaf outside the haram because you won't have a complete circle, Sister Umm Saima. Now, mashallah, there are several stories. If you fail to do it on the ground floors, first, second, third, and on the roof, it's a longer circle, but it's very feasible and affordable. Assalamu alaikum wa Sister Irfana from India. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Irfana. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa How are you, Dr. Salah? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Irfana. Okay, Dr. Salah, I have uh, two questions regarding inheritance. Yes, please. First question is, if a woman passes away, if she's dead, and she leaves behind her husband and two daughters and her brothers and sisters, and uh, she is yet to receive her pro father's uh, you know, share of uh, property, and if she, uh, in this case, who will become her legal heirs and how the property should be divided among them? Okay. Um, I, I, I have a question for you. You said she still to receive her share of the inheritance from her father? Yeah, actually her parents also passed away before her, mm -hmm. but the property is not yet divided. Okay. In this case, yeah, she is about to receive maybe in a year or so, maybe, or a longer period of time, but if so, if, if uh, she receives any share, uh, that is her part, because her parents passed away earlier, so in that case, who will be her inheritance? She has left behind her husband, two daughters, and two brothers and sisters. Okay. Got so that, got that's that. my first question. And the second question is, uh, if a woman, again, uh, if she passes away and leaves behind just father and one sister, in in this case, who will be her legal heirs and how the property to be divided? Father and? One sister who has kids. This lady doesn't have any children or husband. All right. All right, thank you. Any other question? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Kalsum. Kalsum from uh, USA. Assalamu alaikum. Hi. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Um, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, uh, my question is when I pray, and sometimes I eat meat, and should, am I allowed to say alhamdulillah while I'm in the prayer? It's a good question, Kalsum. Yes, you're allowed. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. No, that's all. Okay. My dear brothers and sisters, before we take a break, a short break, I'd like to share something with you very important. MashaAllah, this is, by the grace of Allah, our 13th year. And uh, we're really drained. We've been trying, I myself and my team have been trying <laughs> our level best to continue broadcasting our programs but everything has a limit so most likely if we can continue due to the financial restraint that we're going through I'm doing my level best even to continue to Ramadan inshallah because Ramadan is very important I go live every day during Ramadan so we're doing our level best just make dua for us. I'm not asking for any financial assistance now because it doesn't seem like it is really helping. But just make dua for us to continue. So inshallah Azza Jal will cover Ramadan. Otherwise, in case that uh, we can't, I'll be more than happy to continue on my page on the same timing, inshallah, on the Facebook page, to take the live questions. Even if I manage to make a little studio at home to continue these programs, as Koda Gardens of the Pious, at least these programs, inshallah. It is very, very sad to say that. It's very sad to see the Muslim countries who have, you know, tons of money. They don't know what to do with it, and it is wasted right and left. And we cannot come up with enough fun to run uh, a station, a TV station, that provides knowledge and sound information to the non-Arabic speakers, to the English speakers across the globe. As you see from the calls, mashallah, all the way from the USA to Europe to the Middle East, Africa, it's very interesting, alhamdulillah, shukurullah. 
But Allah Almighty says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. So we're trying our best. Just make dua for us. And if you can come up with a solution, you know, it would be very uh, helpful. You know, Huda TV barely cost per year 600,000 US dollar, which is nothing. Which is nothing. It's not even a YouTube channel. Alhamdulillah. That covers all the expenses of the nine sat, of the media city, the studios, the workers, the cost, the cameraman, everything, everything that uh, will provide 40 hours production every month. MashaAllah. But tell you the truth, it has become very difficult for me to continue this way and keep asking people to support the channel. Not to support me, to support the channel. So I'm just saying that in case that we disappear uh, from uh, the satellite at any day, uh, inshallah Azzajal will resume presenting the programs on my page. Otherwise, if any person of the viewers who may have a solution to support the channel and continue its broadcast, you're most welcome. Jazakumullah khairan. We'll take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. I can't really thank you enough for your beautiful moral support and your dua um, during the break. May the Almighty Allah accept your beautiful dua and give you likewise. Thank you so much. This is what really matters most. That's why I say dear. All what I need from you is dua. As a matter of fact, we are working hard to produce four new programs. Quranic Circle and other programs inshallah to be aired during Ramadan. This is the season of goodness and righteousness. So we too have to work hard to produce something to benefit the Ummah during Ramadan which I'm praying and I'm asking Allah that we may continue until we cover Ramadan inshallah. If any person is interested in sponsoring a program or supporting a program, please send a message and our team will inshallah get in touch with you. This is one thing. Secondly, Alhamdulillah, uh, we resumed our classes with the academy, so uh, there is a link for uh, the Aqida course, Aqida 1, level 1 and level 2 currently, and in a few days, inshallah, we will be Fiqh of Love, marriage from uh, beginning to end, inshallah, and all the questions relating to marriage, engagement, marriage problems, and uh, counseling, uh, divorce, um, and all of that, inshallah. So we're working on parallel tracks, insha'Allah, to provide the alternative in case that we cannot continue. We still ask Allah the Almighty to make it easy for us. As I said, the amount is very insignificant, $600,000 a year is nothing for a TV channel producing 40 hours every month by the grace of Allah in addition to the live broadcast and all of that. By the grace of Allah, and after 13 years, we have an archive which we provide to many channels across the globe. You watch Huda TV programs on Peace, on Guide Us, on you know channels in the UK, in um, in Africa. We do not charge for that, and I'm announcing once again: anyone wants to take our programs absolutely for free to put it on their websites, on their media platform, in order to share their word, we are donating all of that for the sake of Allah. We do not charge anything. We have, by the grace of Allah, 8,000 hours in our archive. Various programs, educational, religious Q&A, uh, fiqh of uh, zakah, of fasting, of the prayers, of hajj, very rich materials by the grace of Allah. We did work very, very hard of recruiting scholars from all over the globe who will record something authentic and genuine to benefit the Ummah. And this is, alhamdulillah, a great heritage. May Allah accept it from all of us. Ameen. 
uh, I believe the link should be shared uh, on the bottom of the screen for those who would like to register in our courses, inshallah. Currently, we're providing uh, Aqeedah level one and level two. There is a minimal charge to support our projects. Those who cannot afford to pay, they're still invited to join in absolutely for free and they will take the exams absolutely for free. MashaAllah. Those who can afford to pay, please do so. It is not much. It is $39.99 per course. And also, the, uh, the brothers and sisters who are willing to sponsor other students, please do so. Some people like to sponsor one or ten students. Uh, of those who would study without pain because they cannot afford it, share their word. Jazakumullah khairan. Sister Arfana from India had two masalas in uh, inheritance. I'd like to answer them after this call. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Fahim, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ask Uda. Fahim? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yes, please. Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, what I know that if you go for Juma prayer, then uh, uh, if the Imam is giving khutbah, you should sit down and listen to it. But I heard from somebody that when you will go for Juma prayer, first you will have to pray two raka of prayer. Even the uh, Imam is uh, giving the uh, uh, khutbah. So uh, how uh, I mean, what we should do? I want to know and. Second, uh, Sheikh, uh, we are always praying, whomever here, I mean, close to me, I am telling them that they should pray for Huda Channel. I mean, this thing is really guiding all of us. Thank you very much for your, uh, the way you are answering the question, Sheikh. And uh, whatever we can do, we will try our best to continue, Sheikh. Thank you so much. Jazakumullah khairan, Brother Fahim. I will answer your question shortly, inshallah, after I tackle Sister uh, Irfana's two questions about inheritance. She said in the first mas'ala, a woman died and she left behind two parents, two daughters, and uh, brothers and sisters. Two parents, two daughters, a husband, and brothers and sisters. You know, the husband, because there is children his share of the inheritance will be one-fourth. If the husband <coughs> were to inherit from his wife and they didn't have any children, his share would be one-half. But because they have children, two daughters, his share will be reduced to only one quarter, okay? The parents, the father will get one-sixth and the mother will get one-sixth, okay? This is the share of each one of them. Did you notice one thing now? Oh. The father is a male and the mother is a female and they get the same share. So a male here doesn't get double the share of a female. Why? Because they are on the same level. So the father will get one sixth of the inheritance and the mother likewise. What about the sisters? Sisters will get nothing. Brothers will get nothing. Why? Because there is a father who block them from the inheritance. The presence of the father would block the brothers and sisters from receiving any inheritance. He can give them gifts later on. But if the father is alive and one of his children died, then he blocks the brothers and sisters from inheriting from their brother or from the sister. And then the, uh, uh, the two daughters will get uh, two thirds of the inheritance or the remaining amount, the two daughters. She also had another mas'ala where she said that a woman died and she left a father and a sister or sisters or brothers. Now everybody is educated in this regard. The father will take the whole inheritance of his daughter and the brothers and sisters will be blocked because of the presence of the father. She also mentioned that you know, the wife before dying, she had a share of the inheritance from lay parents even though it is not working because in one masala she said that the parents still live still alive and they will inherit from her but let's say that she has a share of the inheritance from anybody else that will be added to the inheritance and will be divided as i mentioned earlier assalamu alaikum warahmatullah rayyan from the ksa assalamu alaikum rayyan alaikum assalam warahmatullahi barakatuh go ahead please uh, Shay, I have one question. Yes. Uh, is it halal to invest in uh, the stock market? Okay. Any is, other is questions? Is it halal? I got it. To in okay. 
Okay. Well, Ryan, investing in the stock market, if you're investing your own money or somebody else's money, you're not taking a loan with interest, and you're investing in the market which is halal, electronics, uh, goods which are halal, commodities which are halal, is halal. It is permissible. You buy shares in a particular uh, investment of halal commodities. Then you decide to sell them tomorrow, day after tomorrow, whenever the prices go up. This is pure trade, selling and buying. So it is halal. As long as you avoid uh, taking a loan with interest in order to invest, or invest in halal money in purchasing and selling haram commodities. Jazakallah khair. Fahim asked earlier about entering the masjid while the khatib is giving the Jumu'ah khutbah, the sermon. Shall I sit down to listen or shall I pray the greeting of the masjid? Before answering this question, I would like to bring to your attention the importance of making certain that you enter the masjid before the imam sits on the member, on the pulpit. Because the Prophet said, there are angels standing by the door of every masjid on Friday, Jumu'ah prayer. They write the names of the musalleen, those who come to attend the prayer. First come, first serve, as far as the word. And then when the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum, and sits on the member before the actual Adhan, then the angels fold their records and they enter the masjid. Why? To listen to the sermon, attend the Jumu'ah. It is very important. So if you're late, you're missing. You're missing a great word. You're missing your name is not in the list. But you still must attend, of course. Some people have excuses. Some people were traveler, uh, traveling. Some people were asleep, cut up at work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, a whole surah which he named after the Jumu'ah prayer. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون أو هو يبليف أن هذا أدرس من إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله once you hear the call to the Friday prayer اسعوا leave everything Close your businesses, shut down your shops, and move forward. Hurry, attend the Jumu'ah prayer. The dhikr, dhikr Allah here refers to the sermon. It is absolutely forbidden to conduct any business during the Friday prayer, during the sermon, not only the prayer itself. The sermon is as important as the prayer itself. That is better for you if you were to know. After the prayer, intashiru fil ard, wattaghu min fadlillah. Spread on earth and seek from the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is as far as the importance of attending the Friday sermon and even attending earlier. Secondly, if for a legitimate reason, for a reason or another, you attended the masjid and the imam have started the khutbah, what shall you do? Shall you just sit down? No, you shall not sit down. You shall stand up and offer two rakahs a greeting of the masjid, tahiyyatul masjid, even if the imam is given the khutbah. You should make them brief though. In the sound hadith, there was a companion by the name Sulaik al Ghatafani, who was extremely poor companion. He attended the Jumu'ah once, and he came late and he sat in the masjid while the Prophet ﷺ was presented the Friday sermon. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Ya Sulaik, have you prayed the greeting of the masjid? He said, no. He said, get up and pray. So he got up and he prayed the greeting of the masjid and he sat down. And the incident happened with him twice to indicate that it is really important to pray the Hiyatul masjid and not to sit down whether if you enter during the imam giving the khutbah or at any time the masjid you should not sit down before praying the greeting of the masjid obviously if there was any other due prayer and you started it then you are exempt from praying independent two rakahs for the greeting of the masjid uh, we ran out of time the link to the programs have been just posted also in the comment bar, you should see it, insha'Allah, those who are watching us live on my page, M. Salah Official. 
I hope inshallah we'll have more and more students to sign up. As I said, if you can afford to pay, you're most welcome to register absolutely for free. Only if you can afford. And also if you'd like to sponsor other students, everybody's invited. Thank you so much. May Allah bless you all. Jazakumullah khairan. Love you all for the sake of Allah. We'll continue answering your valuable questions and concerns, inshallah. Hopefully next episode. Tomorrow we have Gardens of the Pious. On Tuesday, inshallah, we have another episode of Ask Oda. Until then, I leave you all in the care of Allah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech